Chapter 2, The Scrap Immortal Third time entering the heavenly capital Congratulations, your highness. Hearing this, Selen looked up, and he smiled before saying anything. Thank you, but can I ask what you're congratulating me for? Ling Wen Zhenjun stood tall, with her hands folded behind her back. Congratulations, you have won first place on the chart of heavenly official most hoped to be banished down to the mortal realm of this calendar term. Well, no matter what, first place is first place, Selen said. But since you're congratulating me, is there anything that's actually worth being happy about? Yes, Ling Wen replied. First place on this chart can receive 100 merits. Xielin immediately said, If there are any similar charts in the future, please absolutely call me up. Do you know who the second place is? Ling Wen asked. Xielin pondered for a moment, then replied, That's too hard to guess. After all, in terms of ability, I should be able to take the first three places myself. Pretty much, Ling Wen said. There isn't a second place. You are so far ahead that you've left everyone in the dust. That's too great of an honor, Xianyan replied. Then who was first place in the previous calendar term? There isn't one, Ling Wen said, because this chart was established as of today. Huh? Xianyan was taken aback. You don't mean to say that this was a chart set up just for me? Ling Wen replied, You can think of it as, you just so happened to have made it in time, and just so happened to steal first place. Xianyan grinned with crescent eyes. All right, I'll be happier if I think of it that way. Do you know why you got first place? Ling Wen continued. By popular demand? Xielian said. Let me explain to you the reason, Ling Wen said. Please look at that bell. Xielian turned his head to gaze towards where she pointed, and what he saw was an extremely beautiful sight. There was a grand palace temple made of white jade, and there were abundant towers, pavilions, and gazebos with heavenly clouds lingering about. Streams flowed and birds danced. He looked for a good while, then asked, Did you perhaps point in the wrong direction? There is no bell anywhere. I didn't, Ling Wen said. It's right there. Don't you see it? Xielian looked again seriously, then answered honestly, I don't. Ling Wen replied, It's right if you don't. There used to be a bell there, but when you ascend it, it fell off because of the quakes. That clock is older than you, but it has a spirited character and enjoyed a good spectacle. Whenever someone ascends, it would toll a few times to applaud, the day you ascended, the quakes were so strong, the bell tolled like mad and couldn't stop at all. In the end, it made itself fall off the bell tower before it finally ceased. And when it fell, it crashed into one of the heavenly officials passing by. Um, then is everything better now? Selen inquired. Not yet. It's still under repairs, Ling Wen replied. I meant that heavenly official who was hurt, Selen clarified. The one it hit was a martial god, Ling Wen said. A flip of his hand and the bell was chopped into two, right then and there. Now, please look over at that golden palace. Do you see it? Again, Xielian looked to where she was pointing and saw amidst the haze of clouds the bright glass golden roof. Ah, this time I see it. It's not right if you see it, Ling Wen said. There didn't used to be anything there. When you ascended, the golden pillars of the golden palaces of a number of heavenly officials collapsed from the quakes, and their glass tiles shattered. There are some that won't be so easily fixed, so the heavenly officials could only put together some last-minute palaces to make do for the time being. And I'm the one responsible? You're the one responsible. Hmm, Xielin asked to confirm. So, I have offended many heavenly officials the moment I arrived? If you can make amends, maybe not, Ling Wen said. How do I make amends? Easy. With 8,880,000 merits. Xielian grinned again. Ling Wen added, Of course, I know you don't have even a tenth of that amount. Xielian replied earnestly, How do I say this? Even though I'm very sorry, even if you want just ten thousandth of that amount, I don't have it. The faith of moral believers was converted into a heavenly official's spiritual power, and every stick of incense they lit and every offering they gave were thus called merits. Xielian turned solemn and asked seriously, are you willing to kick me down from here and give me 8,880,000 merits for it? I'm a civil god, Ling Wen said. If you're looking for someone to kick you down under, you'll need to find a martial god for it. The harder they kick, the more merits they give. Xie Lian heaved a long sigh. <sighs> Please allow me to think on what to do. Xie Lian heaved a long sigh. <sighs> Please allow me to think on what to do. Ling Wen patted his shoulder. Don't worry. There will always be a way when the carriage reaches the mountain. Boats always sink when they reach the pierhead for me, though, 
Xie Lian said. If this was 800 years ago, when the palace of Xianle was at its peak of prosperity, 8,880,000 merits would be nothing. The crown prince could throw it out without batting an eye. But the present wasn't the same as the past, and all of his temples in the mortal realm had long since been burned to the ground. He had no believers, no incense, and no offerings. There was no need to say more on the subject. Either way, he had nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. He crouched on the side of the large main street of the heavenly capital by himself, feeling distraught for a while, before suddenly remembering he had ascended for almost three days now, but he still hadn't entered the communication array of the upper court. He forgot to ask what the verbal password was earlier. The heavenly officials of the upper court had gotten together and set up an array that could allow the consciousness to communicate and pass on messages within the array instantaneously. Once ascended, one must enter the array, but the password was required in order for the consciousness to find the designated communication array. The last time Sien had entered the array was 800 years ago, and he didn't remember the password at all. He let his consciousness scatter to search and saw an array that seemed to be what he was looking for, so he just went in. The moment he entered the array, he was blown away by the whirlwind of yelling pouring from all over. Place your bets and no take backs. Let's wager on how long our royal highness, the crown prince, can last before going down again. I bet one year. One year is too long. Last time it was only one incense time. It'll be three days this time, I think. I put my merits down on three days. Three days. Don't you dimwit? Three days is almost over already. Do you even know how to gamble? Xiaolin silently exited the array. He got in the wrong one. That definitely wasn't it. The heavenly officials of the upper court of heaven were all bigwigs who ruled over a given region, widely known by every household, and were kept occupied by a myriad of state affairs. Since they were deities who ascended respectably, keeping in mind their status, they were generally more discreet and often haughty in their speech and action. He himself had been the only one who went to greet every single heavenly official inside the communication array out of excitement the first time he ascended, incomparably earnest and exceedingly thorough in introducing himself from head to toe. After he exited that array, he went on another random search and entered into another one randomly. This time when he went in, he relaxed, thinking to himself, how quiet, it's probably this one. Just then, he heard a voice say softly, so, your highness is back? It was a very comfortable voice, the sound soft and gentle, the tone decorous. However, if one was to listen to it closely, one would discover that the voice was quite cool and indifferent and the sentiment it carried was also cool and distant, causing that soft gentleness to turn into something more malicious in intent. Xielin had originally wanted to enter the array manneredly and lie low quietly, but since the other party had already addressed him, he couldn't keep pretending to be deaf and mute. Besides, he was still very delighted that there were actually heavenly officials in the upper court who would willingly start a conversation with a god of misfortune like himself. Thus, he quickly answered, Yeah, hello everyone, I'm back again. Yet, little did he know, after this exchange, every single heavenly official who was currently inside the communication array all perked up. That heavenly official said languidly, Your Highness certainly ascended with great force this time, huh? Within the upper court of heaven, emperors, kings, generals, chancellors were found everywhere, and heroes flowed like the water. In order to become a deity, one must first achieve greatness. Within the mortal realm, those who had established laurels or ones possessing great talent had always had a greater chance at ascension. Thus, it wasn't an exaggeration to say that rulers, princes, royalty, generals, none of these were a rarity here. Everyone was a darling of the heavens. Everyone was proprietary with each other, so they would address one another as your majesty, your highness, lord general, alliance chief, head chief, all sorts, as long as the address was flattering. However, the words from this one heavenly official seemed to have something underlying in the tone. Although he said, your highness this, your highness that, Xielin couldn't sense a bit of respect from him at all. It was more like he was poking with a needle. There were also several heavenly officials inside the communication array who were authentic crown princes, and they were feeling the hairs on their neck rise from such an address, incredibly uncomfortable. Xielin could tell that the other party didn't come with good intentions, but he didn't want to fight and so chose to run instead. He smiled. It's not too bad. However, the heavenly official wouldn't give him the chance to run and said impassively, it's your highness after all, so not too bad, but my luck doesn't seem to be as good. 
Suddenly, Xilin heard a private message from Lin Wen. She only said one word, Bell. Instantly, Xilin understood. So this was the martial god who was hit by the bell. If that was the case, then the other party wasn't angry without reason. Xilin had always been very good at apologizing, so he immediately said, I've heard about the accident with the bell. I'm dreadfully sorry. I do apologize. The other party humped, the meaning unclear. There were a great number of renowned martial gods in the heavenly realm, and many of them were newly ascended dignitaries who came after Xianlin's time. Just by voice alone, Xianlin couldn't be sure who this person was, but he couldn't stay ignorant of his name after apologizing either. So Xianlin asked, Might I ask how I may address my lord? The moment he spoke, the other side fell silent. Not only did the other side fall silent, the entire communication array was like it had frozen, and suddenly, the air was dead. On the other end, Ling Wen sent him another voice message. Your Highness, although I don't think you wouldn't have recognized him after talking for so long, but I still want to give you a reminder. That's Xuan Zhen. Xuan Zhen? Xian Lin said. He was stumped for a moment before he finally came around and sent a voice message back in shock. That's Mu Qing? General Xuan Zhen was the martial god of the Southwest and possessed 7,000 temples. His name in the human world was considerably distinguished. And the original name of this general Xuan Zhen was Mu Qing. 800 years ago, he was a deputy general at the Xianla Palace of the Crown Prince. Ling Wen was also quite shocked. You really didn't recognize him? I really didn't, Xian Lin replied. He didn't talk to me like this back then. Besides, I can't even remember when the last time we met. It was either five or six centuries ago. I can barely remember what he looks like, so how can I possibly remember what his voice sounds like? The communication array was still deep in silence. Mu Qing didn't utter a single sound, and the other heavenly officials were pretending they weren't listening while waiting on the edge of their seats for whichever one would continue the conversation. Things were rather awkward when it came to these two. After so many years of twisted rumors, everyone basically knew most of the story at this point. Back then, when Xie Lian was still the esteemed crown prince of Xianle, he trained at the Royal Holy Pavilion. This Royal Holy Pavilion was a royal cultivation hall in the kingdom of Xianle, with a very strict standard in selecting disciples. Mu Qing came from an impoverished background, and his father was an executed criminal. Someone like this didn't qualify to enter the Royal Holy Pavilion, so he could only run errands. Within the temple grounds, he was someone who cleaned the Royal Highness's room and served tea and water. Xie Lian saw how hard he was working, so he requested for the Guo Shi to make an exception to take Mu Qing in as a disciple. It was only by the golden mouth of the Royal Highness that Mu Qing could enter the temple to cultivate and be trained alongside the crown prince. Then, after ascension, Xie Lian appointed him his general and took him along to the heavenly capital. However, when the kingdom of Xianle fell and Xie Lian was banished to the mortal world, Mu Qing didn't follow him. Not only did he not follow, he never even spoke a word in Xie Lian's favor. Either way, the crown prince was gone, so he was free. He found a cave in a piece of auspicious land and trained strenuously, and not a few years later, he passed a heavenly calamity and ascended to heaven himself. In the past, one was in the heavens and one on earth. Now, there was still one in the heavens and one on earth. It was just their positions had thoroughly switched, that's all. On this end, Lin Wen said, He's very angry. I figured as much, Xie Lian said. I'll go start another topic of conversation. You best take the chance to leave, Ling Wen said. Nah, it's okay, Xian Lin replied. It's fine as long as we pretend nothing's happened. It's okay, Ling Wen said. I feel awkward just watching you two. It's not that bad, Xian Lin replied. For someone like Xian Lin, anything really was okay aside from death. He didn't have much, and certainly not shame. He had suffered much, much more awkward things than this, so he genuinely felt that this was okay. Yet who knew that okay wasn't a word to be uttered lightly? He had only just said, it's okay, when a voice roared angrily, Who the fuck tore down my golden palace? Show yourself! This angry roar was going to make the heads of all the gods explode. While they were already filled to the brim with surging complaints, each of them still held their breaths, waiting soundlessly to hear how Xianlin was going to answer this accusing cry. Yet unexpectedly, things only got more exciting. Before Xianlin had opened his mouth, Mu Qing spoke up first. Or rather, he only snorted. Huh. <laughs> the newcomer spat coldly. You tore it down? Good. Just you wait. Mu Qing replied coolly. I didn't say it was me. Don't accuse people without evidence. The other party said angrily. Then what are you laughing about? You mental? 
No reason. You just sound funny, that's all, Mutin said. The one who tore down your golden palace is in the communication array right now. Go interrogate him yourself. With things reaching this point, Xielian was too embarrassed to run away just like that. He cleared his throat. It was me. I'm sorry. The moment he spoke, that one who came after also fell silent. Next to his ear, Lingwen messaged him again. Your Highness, that's Nanyang. This one I knew, Xielian said, but it seems he didn't recognize me. He did, Lingwen said. It's just that he spends more time roaming the mortal realm and rarely comes back to the heavenly capital, so he didn't know that you had ascended again, that's all. Nanyang Zhenjun was the martial god of the southeast, possessed 8,000 temples, and was incredibly loved by the people. His original name was Feng Xin, and 800 years ago, he was the number one heavenly official in the Xianle Palace of the Crown Prince. Feng Xin was loyal to a fault, and had been Xie Lian's bodyguard since Xie Lian was 14 years old. He grew up with the Crown Prince, they entered the heavens together, were banished together, and drifted together. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to endure the 800 years together. In the end, it was an unhappy separation as each went their own paths, never to meet again. <laughs>